save 10% with my code BOBBY10. Just kidding guys, today's offer is much greater than a saving of 10%. I teamed up with my Muslim brothers and we created Pure Passage. Imagine sending the reward of Umrah this Ramadan to someone you really loved but had already departed from this dunya. Or they're really sick and they cannot perform Umrah at all. Imagine the feeling of honoring his or her memory and expressing your love and devotion while still ensuring that they receive this gift. The reward of performing Umrah. As a new revert, I just learned about this, but you know better than me that performing Umrah is a profound spiritual journey that most Muslims aspire to undertake and you understand the rewards of it. However, for some, this journey can be challenging, especially when their loved ones are sick or have already passed away. At Pure Passage, we understand how important it is to fulfill this obligation for your loved ones. That's why we offer our professional and reliable service to perform Umrah on behalf of your sick or deceased parents, spouse or any other relatives. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to fulfill this sacred act even if they are unable to do so themselves and equally understand that the physical and financial challenges of performing Umrah yourself on behalf of your loved ones can be overwhelming. That's where Pure Passage comes in. We take care of everything and make sure that your loved one's Umrah is performed with the utmost care and attention to detail. So let us help you earn this immense reward for your loved ones by performing Umrah on their behalf. Contact us today and let's make it happen. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, finally, we're going to continue with the Prophet series today with Prophet Hood and the nation of Ad. Guys, you waited long enough for this, so we're going to jump right into the video. Just do me the favor, if you enjoy my videos, leave them a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the description box. All the links to support this channel are in that box. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. With no further ado, let's have a look. After the flood, the people were on Tawheed. They worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first people to introduce the idols back into the worship they were given the most power of any nation before them. Every single individual in this town. All right, so that's very interesting because now we are speaking about a reset ultimately. When Noah, Nuh came, he reminded the people of monotheism, of Tawhid, but they didn't want to listen. So God sends the flood. After this reset, you have new people that are on the monotheism, that are upon the truth, obviously. But now you see they're declining yet again and they start to worship anything besides Allah. Massively built, powerfully built. These people are actually giants. So nobody could stand up to these guys. And so they were... The Very interesting. We have the same narrative in the Bible. Those giants are called the Nephilim. Superpower that took over much of the land. They used to yep. build those palaces in the mountains. So unique palaces for the sake of fun. But these were giant pillars and they were decorated and they had a lot of decor all around and a beautification Is of this Minecraft? was next to nothing. These were the people of Ad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a prophet to them now. What was his message? The same message of Nuh. Oh my people, worship Allah. You have no other God but him. And such were the people of... And once you get this message, you cannot resist Islam any longer. Once you understand that Islam has a clear-cut message, a red thread that is always the same, why would it be any different if God's pattern is not changing, never changing, God is eternal, why would the message change? Once you open up your eyes, once you open up your heart to this message, you cannot go back. This was really the crucial factor for me personally. This is why I reverted to Islam. Uh, no they other denied the revelation of their Lord None. and disobeyed his messenger. This is in fact what they were asking for. It is the punishment of Allah coming with wind. Anything that this wind will pass will make I it will like dust. That much. This wind will grab them, will take them up to the heavens and with their heads first on the ground. 
Aad disbelieved in me alone. Screaming. So away with Why? Aad, the people of Hud. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa la. Amma ba'd. Hud, that's a cool name. After Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, his qawm, his nation, they remained upon Tawheed, upon the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for some time. Until there came a nation called Aad. Aad and Iram, the all one, nine for one tribe. Their location was a location called Al-Ahqaf. Al-Ahqaf means sand dunes. So it's a desert area right now. It was in that case before. Where is it? Between Oman and Yemen, close to Hadramaut, in the southern Arabian Peninsula, Middle Eastern region. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described these people and their description is amazing. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them is amazing. They were given the most power of any nation before them. The people of Ad were humongous people. Gigantic people, very strong, very tough, and very smart. These people are actually giants. You know, they're, they're, they're taller than everybody else in the creation. They were, they were more muscular, their bone structure were very, very powerful. So yeah, the difference here is within the biblical context, those Nephilim are fallen angels. So yes, they are giants, they come to earth and then they have with the daughters of men. This is the biblical story and their offspring, those become the giants and they become this particular nation. Nobody could stand up to these guys. And as a result, when somebody is powerful and strong and nobody can stand up against them, they take over and they destroy. And so they were the superpower that took over much of the land. It's been narrated that they were so strong, so big, that one of them will grab a palm tree with his hand and pull it off. Pulling a palm tree with your hand? You need a bulldozer to take a palm tree. They would go anywhere and any law that they said was the law. Because of their power, because of their physical Might power, right. because of their political power. When they would attack any neighbors, they would completely destroy them. Tyrants. And the description of their armies, the Mufassirin, they said when they would leave the army, the army would leave their city, when the front rows of the army would reach the enemy, but the last of the armies still have not left their town. They had massive armies. Allah said, such people, such creation, I never created before in this world, ever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them livestock and has given them manpower and has given them agriculture and has provided them with an ample supply, good supply of water. That is as a society. And then they as the individual, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a powerful structure. And they had the gardens and they had the rivers that flowed through those gardens. And because they are very oh, smart, they were very civilized. They had wealth that was so enormous. They had so much luxury. They started to fall into the trap that rich nations fall into. And that is using your money for pride and arrogance. They would find a right. huge mountain and they would just build something up there. A huge castle. Someone would pass by and they would say, Could who be. built this castle? Who lives there? Nobody lives there, but it belongs to Ad. That they were not used for living. They don't need them. They just building them for pride to show off. They had pillars all so we're doing over. As well, huh? And if you looked at it, it was like the golden city. It was a city you wanted to be in. That maybe with all the technology that you have these days, that would not architect and engineer such good and big palaces in the mountains that were good and big yeah the point of the story is of course that we heard about ancient civilizations that fell and have been destroyed be it the mayans be it the aztecs be it the incas and whatnot all around the world we find reminders of those ancient high civilizations and to this very day people are wondering archaeologists are wondering how the pyramids for example have been built it points towards that those people were much further than us in their development had technology that we don't even have nowadays. I had at those times. 
But these were giant pillars and they were decorated and they had a lot of decor all around and the beautification of this was next to nothing. They used to build it in a way as if they're going to live forever. So strong and powerful. And some scholars say even to the day of judgment no palaces will ever exist like the ones they had. They were a proud and arrogant nation and they were the first individuals after the flood after Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, from the progeny of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, they were the first individuals to start to commit shirk once again. They Makes start sense. to associate because if you accomplish so much, quote unquote, if you build such towers, you build such castles, you start feeling proud of yourself, as they said correctly. And once pride kicks in, you're starting to worship yourself. Yet again, even though you believe you're worshipping God, ultimately when you become proud, you start worshipping yourself. We see that with some Protestants, for example, they call it the prosperity gospel. And all praise to God, all praise to Jesus. They say that he has blessed us with money. But ultimately they become proud of themselves. They can host such big events. And with that, they start worshipping themselves. Partners As always Allah the same. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. They specifically worship three idols. The names of the idols were Fuda, Samud, and Hara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a prophet to them now. His name was Hud. He was Hud, the son of Shalikh, the son of Arfakhash, the son of Sam, the son of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Please let me know in the comment section which prophet this would be in a Christian context because I do not know anybody named Hud. And the messengers, there are four prophets and messengers who are Arabs. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Hud was an Arab, Salih was an Arab, Shu'aib was an Arab, and he told Abu Huraira, and your prophet was, is also an Arab. Allah says, and to Ad, the people of Ad, we sent them their brother, Hud. The reason why Allah says brother here is because Hud alayhi salam came from their tribe. And he grew up amongst them and they knew him as they know each other. So they learned his honesty, integrity, sincerity, truthfulness, character and so on. Hud alayhi salam had a strong, enormous body alayhi salam and was very handsome. What was his message? The same message of Nuh, O oh my people, worship Allah, you have no other God but Him. Certainly you do nothing but invent lies. These gods who you are worshipping are lies. Remember what Allah Azza wa Jal had given you. Remember what Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala had bestowed upon you. And remember what Allah had made you as Khulafa successors after the tribe of Nuh. And He had given you strength, physical, strong physical bodies. O oh, my people, ask forgiveness of your Lord and then repent to Him. He will send you from the sky abandoned rain and add strength to your strength. So with Istighfar, you would become more powerful than you are now. They were already powerful and strong. So what was the response of the people of Ad? The first thing they did was they rejected Him and they rejected His words. They said, every time you try to change the narrative of the times, you will be met with force, you will be met with opposition. Just look back what has happened from 2020 to 2022. Every time you would go against the global narrative, you would be deemed clinically insane. Oh Hud, no evidence have you brought us. And we shall Science. not leave our gods for your Show mere the studies. And we are not believers in you. They used to make fun of him. Wouldn't Allah send someone beside your Hud? Who are you to come and tell us what to do? Can't you look at our strength? Can't you look at our power? Can't you look at our civilization? This is the way our forefathers used to worship. Who are you to come change it? Oh, the people of Ad will accuse Hud, saying, Look at the way you speak. You are acting different to us. You are speaking different to us. You are behaving different to us because our lords are angry from you. Subhanallah, Lord, made out of statues. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ad denied the messengers. How many messengers did they receive? One. How come it's made plural? If you refuse one messenger, 
it is as if you refuse them all because yeah again this makes sense sin- man this is exactly what i'm talking about if you accept islam you do not reject jesus people tell me now oh you left jesus for muhammad no that is not true you accept all the messengers why because they all came with the same message worship god alone even in the christian context yet again the first commandment is you shall have no gods before me and moreover jesus never said to worship a trinitarian god to worship the father and the son and the holy spirit to worship him he never told us those things therefore no i'm not rejecting jesus i'm accepting all the messengers just came with the it's same simple, message actually. That's if you refuse the message of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it would not suffice you to believe in Isa or Musa or any other nabi if you disbelieved in one nabi in one rasul it is as if you have disbelieved in all of them he dis- that makes perfect sense because you're disbelieving in God's message ultimately which is always the same and God is always the same he is already perfect and he is one believers and it's the logical. haughty from amongst his community they began to say that you are foolish we see that you are a foolish man you're a fool who responded back said there is no foolishness in me I'm only a messenger from the Lord of this universe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I convey the message of Allah to you I'm only a good advisor and sincere advisor to you. I just want to warn you from a severe punishment that will come. You build yourself palaces and you don't live in it? And you build all these monuments and you don't benefit from it? Why are you doing this? Is it to show off to people? When you attack, you attack like tyrants and destroy your enemies without any trace, without any mercy? You know, and Hud is telling them, look at the way you behave as a superpower in the world. Just because you have the power doesn't mean you have you can go and destroy everybody else that's under you. You have to have mercy and compassion towards the people. And the people of Hud alayhi salam they didn't care. They were also amazed that how can a man come to us? If Allah wanted to send a messenger, he could have sent an angel. Why did he have to send a human being? That's what they always want to come now and change our way of life. This is the way things are here. This is the way we used to live and this is the way things are. Who are you to come change it? And they were stuck on their misguided way of life, their traditions. Man, yet again, this is why Islam is so powerful and this is why it gives you strength as well as a revert because you are fighting the current narrative within your nation. If you are from Germany, if you are from France, if you are from the United States or from the Balkans as myself, what happens is you are born within a society that is allegedly Christian. However, there are many different ideologies infused into that society as well, be it democracy, be it communism, be it liberalism and what not. And if you want to go against the grain people will of course fight you people won't understand why you have accepted a new religion even though it's not a new religion there's only one relationship between us and god and islam prepares you for that battle because prophet muhammad may peace be upon him was fighting against his own people as well they were ridiculing him they were telling him why do you want to change what we've been doing before this is how our ancestors worshiped and this is how we want to worship They're saying that if you follow a man it's amazing that is the same as you same as you he eats like you he drinks like you they said in that case you will be losers what makes him any better than us he says oh my people he says don't you know Allah is your creator you think you're strong you have muscles you have power you have military might you have these tanks and whatever you got Allah is the one who created you and everything you possess So fear Allah and obey me. Now they are accusing Hud of lying against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are claiming that they are the true believers in Allah and he is lying against Allah. They said there is nothing but our life of this world we die and we live and we are not going to be resurrected. He is only a man who has invented a lie against Allah. But we are not going to believe in him. They started spreading a rumor that this man here He's doing it for some ulterior motive. He wants some money. Allahu Akbar. Why? Why lay, lay accusations? So Hud alayhi salatu wasalam says, Oh my people, I'm not asking you to recompense me in any way whatsoever. My reward lies with the one who made me. And another thing they, they used to do is they had taxation. 
they had blocked some of the passageways in travel and they used to tax travelers. And they used to take the wealth of the people unjustly. And Hud is telling them, don't do this, don't do that. And he used to call them to social justice. And Hud will continue calling them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And calling them to Allah. And remind them about Allah. And calling them to Allah. And remind them about Allah Azza wa Jal. And the more he calls them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the more they become stubborn against the call of Allah. And the more he reminds them about the Tawheed, the more they get against the Tawheed. And the more he reminds them about the favors of Allah upon them, it's the more they turn against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Really to scream. And the more they mock and make fun of Hud alayhi salam. To the stage they said, can't you look how strong we are? Who is stronger than us? Even your own Lord is not even stronger than us. They said, these tales that you are telling us about Nuh, because he told them that Nuh alayhi salam's people were destroyed just before you. He says, these are tales of the people of the past. As for us, we are stronger than them. We have much more than them. We cannot be destroyed. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. You always find a civilization in amnesia almost. They have forgotten. And moreover, they always believe that those are tales of the past. They're just fiction, right? Nowadays, people will tell you exactly the same thing. Ooh, we are so evolved now. Now we have the science. Now we have the technology. We are so, so strong. But it's absolutely insane when we see a natural catastrophe, like an earthquake, for example, we get humbled right away. Sci-fi movies will tell us, oh, we can predict when a meteorite will hit Earth and we can prevent that. But you cannot predict an earthquake, man. We have absolutely no control over this world. All the control lays within God's hands, of course. So the true curse of every high civilization is arrogance. They said, there is nobody more strong than us. Yeah, yeah. No one. Who is there who like has more Frank power than Zane? us? This was a question. Looks like the bodybuilder Frank Zane. So Allah responds immediately. Do they not see simple calculation in their brains that the one who created them, the Allah, is more powerful than them? And pride is it. what made them do what they did. And that's the same pride that made Iblis not to prostrate to Adam alayhi salam. Pride, the mother of diseases. Pride, the mother of all sins. And the only one that deserves to have pride is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the kind of thing that... No, I disagree. He doesn't need to be proud. Moreover, God has no need whatsoever because he is already perfect. And moreover than that, there is only one God. So why should he be proud? There is absolutely no other than him. So he doesn't have to boast in front of other gods. Don't you get it? You tell us... <laughs> no, they don't get it, man. ...what to do. You don't tell us what to do. You warn us, you don't warn us. You give us advice, you don't give us advice. It's the same. We're not changing. So we've told you so many times. Hud alayhi salam got up in front of... And the interesting of thing is that the only constant in life is change. So even though those people were convinced that they are not going to change, ultimately everything has changed. So don't get sucked into the global narrative of our times. Now people believe we made it. Nothing will ever change. We have our smartphones, we have our social media. Nothing will ever change. We did it. Of course not, man. Everything will change. 20, 30, 50, 100, 300 years into the future everything will change of all his people and he says oh my inescapable people, i am making allah bear witness and i am making all of you bear witness that i am free from all that which you have associated as partnership with allah so now if you want to plot against me all of you get together and let's see what you're going to do to me now this was a challenge the other way around now this was a challenge the messengers never normally told the people, look, come attack me. When you come, you will see what will happen. Allah will destroy you just as you come. This is what he said. So they, they didn't come. Allahu Akbar. And so the people of Hud said, Oh Hud, you've talked to us so much about this punishment. You kept bragging about this punishment. Bring the punishment. Go ahead. Bring it on. Who could punish us? We are Qawmaad. We are those with strength and pride. We are those with power. We are those with greatness. Who could punish us? Even your own Lord can't even punish us. Well, you say that Allah can do anything against an us? Against do Lord. whatever you want. Who is more powerful than us? 
So he, he leaves it to Allah. He says, it's not up to me to punish you. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you think this is something personal between me and you, you're mistaken. I'm only giving you good advice. But if you don't believe me, then it's your own loss. So Hud alayhi salam at that point made dua. Hud alayhi salam, a dua mentioned in the Quran, one dua, short, short as anything. He says, Oh Allah, assist me because they have now belied me. That's all. Help me, Ya Allah. That's all he said. And Allah responded immediately. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Don't worry, Hud. Very, very soon they will regret everything. Allah still gives them that time. If they want to repent, they could repent to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. What happens? Three years, for three solid years, not one drop of rain. And he, the people of Ad, start to realize many of the trees are dying, many of the plants are dying, many of the kettles are dying, they need water. What's happening here? And Hud told them, Oh my people, if you really want rain, there's two things you need to do. Repent and turn to Allah. And you know how strong you are? Allah will grant you more strength over and above the strength you already have. Look, we're not going to get punished. You've been telling us for years. Get the message. You've been saying you, we're going to get punished. We've been telling you, go and bring the punishment. So Sayyidina Hud was saying, look, you're, you are in the punishment. You are in the punishment, guys, because the rains have stopped. That's the punishment. They said to him, what? You think that's punishment? No, no, no. The only reason why it stopped raining is because of you. That's what they said to him. The rains have stopped because our gods have cursed us and you because you still wandering around saying bad things about them. The moment you leave, that's the moment the rain comes down. Don't understand? It's your problem. Now subhanallah, how do you argue with these people? Allah tells Hud and his followers to leave Let town. Them suffer. They leave. When he leaves the city and all the believers leave with him, don't forget they're giving up their belongings, giving up their houses, <laughs> giving up anything. And you can imagine there's almost like a party here now. They're thrilled. They, the guy's going. Man, bad time. Get out of here, man, quick. They started to cry unto their gods. They used to offer sacrifices for their gods and they started asking their gods for rain. Now, whilst they were invoking the idols, suddenly they heard a voice from the heavens. A crier calls out from the heavens and says, Do you all want clouds? Then they all replied, Yes. What color clouds do you all want? Do you want yellow clouds? Do you want red clouds? Blue clouds? What color do you want? They all cried out, We want gray, dark clouds. Why? Right. Because? The minute you see dark clouds, what comes to your mind? Ah, it's going to rain, mashallah, right? The voice said, fine, you will have it. And now they were happy. They thought their invocation to their gods had been answered. And now they started to expect the dark gray clouds that were promised to them. They see a beautiful thing that they've been waiting for. One day, a gray dark uh. cloud it's we don't look often enough to the skies the anymore, man. They say, "Woo!" Do you see, guys? All these years we've been saying, the man is cursed. He's leaving now. And our gods are bringing the rain back again. When they saw this cloud coming to them. Everything works, eh? They said, this cloud is coming to give us rain. <laughs> see how Allah makes them feel comfortable. Feel very comfortable. Feel very secured. But Allah says, if my servant secures me in this dunya, I'll make him fear me in the hereafter. And if my servant fears me in this dunya, I'll secure him in the hereafter. Little than you, this cloud was the beginning of a great end. Rasulullah when he would see clouds approaching Medina, his face would change. You can see that he is worried. And Aisha would notice that. She asked Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She said, "Oh Rasulullah, when people see the clouds, they are happy, especially in Arabia because they don't receive lot of rain. When people see the clouds are coming, they are happy. They are very pleased." 
So Aisha said, When people see the clouds approaching, they are happy, but you look anxious. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Because a nation before us saw these clouds and thought that they had mercy. They didn't know that it had the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had the fear in his heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So we sent upon them furious wind in days of evil omen for them, severely cold and very ringing and loud voice and very furious. This is the wind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent on them. Anything that this wind will pass will make it like dust. So the people of Ad saw this, they ran into their palaces, into their houses, into the mountains. They saw, they thought, we'll be protected here. Your Lord is great. And His punishment is severe. Allah Azza wa sent on them the wind. This wind will grab them, will take them up to the heavens. And those who thought they could hide into their palaces, into the mountains, Allah will send the wind inside the mountain, will grab them, take them out, take them up to the heavens. And He's starting to swirl them around, these giants. Now these are not normal people. For the whole 24 hours, Allah gave it permission to go completely out of control. So it came around and it was twirling and twirling. Now 24 hours are gone. No, then Allah says, I let it continue the next day. It's carrying on. These people are still in the air. They're carrying on. And the next night, and the next day, 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 and they're still in the air. That's pretty horrible. Man. They're all the buildings, their belongings, they're all their pillars, all their luxuries, all of it's in the air. Allah said, I left it there. Four days, four nights, five days, five nights, six days, six nights, seven days, seven nights, and the eight. Please let me know in the comment section as well if this is authentic, because oftentimes I really do not know. I'm just watching those videos and I have to take their word for it. I haven't found those stories like that in the Quran, so I assume that they are in the Hadiths. However, if they're authentic or not, I do not know. So please let me know. Eighth day. The wind was still blowing and then the wind went, but then he went whoop, straight on the ground. It hit them on the ground. What happened is when they were left on the ground, they weren't in one piece. They were twisted and they were twisted limbs, yes. But basically what Allah had done to them is Allah had broken every limb of their body. So you saw arms there, you saw hand there, you saw feet here, you saw body there, you saw parts of a body here. Allah said all over this whole city of a thousand pillars, all you saw was dead body after dead body. No, this world has never seen such a natural disaster in its history. Allah says that we might give them a taste of disgracing torment in this present world. But surely the torment of the hereafter will be more disgracing and they will never be helped. What was the result? When the dust settled down and you walk into the nation of Ad, what do you see? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so that you could see men lying over thrown as if they were hollow trunks of palm trees. These were very tall men. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they are like palm trees that are knocked down, upside down, lying dead. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us this question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do you see any remnants of the people of Ad? We have remnants from the people of Firaun, the pyramids. We have remnants from Samud, the dwellings of Samud. We have remnants from the Greek Empire. We have remnants from the Roman Empire. But from the Empire of Ad, we have nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely destroyed them because they were the most powerful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely erased them from the face of the earth. And now it is the land called al -Hikaf, sand dunes. You don't even see nothing. Nobody even lives there. It's the desert now in Hadramaut, known al -Hikaf. It's the desert, empty. This is the nation which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Iram, the land of pillars, which no other land was similar to. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give the permission to that wind to get near Hud and those who believed with him. So the wind will come and move away from Hud and those who believe with Hud and Hud was in a shed with some carols and Allah Azza wa Jal even protected those carols from that wind. Allah says, And when our command came, we rescued Hud and those who believed with him. 
through our mercy and saved them from a severe chastisement. When Hud salam returned and saw them this way, he said the following words, I advised you also, but you, O people, do not like the ones who advise you. And the believers with Hud lived in Hadramaut, in the Ahqaf, as all believers, and once again, believing in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Tawheed took over the land until Hud alayhi salam passed away and it was buried in Hadramaut in Yemen. After them, by many generations, and from them, the tribe of Thamud will come. And the tribe of Thamud is one of the offsprings of the tribe of Ad. The minute they forgot about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Azzawajal, He sent a prophet to them to remind them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what was his name? His name was Salih alayhi salam. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video, guys. I'm going to cut it off right here because this video is long enough as it is. Yes, promised, inshallah. We're going to continue with the Prophet series very, very soon, guys. If you like the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support the channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, and as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.